And my text tonight will be how to look at the unseen. He asked that question, how do you tap in to the unseen? What about this? And I'm reading three scriptures here tonight. Matthew 24, 35, you know this by heart. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Hebrews 12, 28, and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And then an old familiar verse of Scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I'll prove to you tonight by the word of God that prayer can cause you to see invisible things at times. And I want us to pray for that tonight, that the Lord pull back the curtain just a little bit tonight, let some get a glimpse of really what he wants to do in their lives and in their bodies here tonight. Can you pray with me, everybody? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, Lord, to pull the curtain of time back just a little. Let eyes glance through. And let them lay hold of things that will bless them. If there is a sinner or backslider here tonight, I pray they too will see, they will get a glimpse behind that curtain and those that need healing may they see the great physician standing ready to heal whosoever will in Jesus name amen you may be seated while we look not at things seen but at things not seen Try that tonight. How to look at things not seen. The Spirit of the Lord is moving upon some to do that very thing. Last uh, Sunday night while we were down here praying for these, the Lord opened someone's eyes and they saw someone standing with us with a white robe on. That same one is here tonight. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Then he said he went about with the disciples everywhere, and as they preached the word, he confirmed it with signs following. Temporal things we're taught right here in this scripture will pass the heavens and the earth shall pass away. The day will finally come when the last created thing, the last created star will twinkle and go out forever and forever because we'll be moving into a new eternal dimension that'll never pass away and some of these things has to pass the Bible tells us 
they have to be shaken that the truth may remain forever and forever. This world is passing and passing fast. Ecclesiastes 1 and 4 said, One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. It seemed only yesterday I was just a little bare-headed, barefoot boy running down the dusty road, riding my tricycle, trying to pump water out of the old well pump. It seemed only yesterday the days have swiftly gone by. All of my elders, kinfolk in those days, have been gone for a long, long time. Many of my friends that I grew up with has long been gone on. And I know the time will come soon for me. But that's all right. Today, I'm old, so I know just a little bit more about looking at things unseen than perhaps the younger generation. I have watched our youth, I've watched them come and I've watched them go. So it's natural for me to begin to look at my age at things unseen. How do you do it? Is the question often asked. You do it with the eye of faith. The eye of faith. Jesus practices always in John eight fifty six. He said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Abraham had eyes of faith. He looked down through the time and he saw the coming of the Messiah. He also learned by walking with God uh, to think of those things or call those things which be not as though they were. Also, Hebrews eleven twenty seven Moses, the Bible tells us, endured as seeing him who is invisible. He had eyes of faith. John five nineteen, Jesus said, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Jesus had eyes of faith. He always watched the moving of the Spirit. He listened to that still small voice talking to him. In Luke 9 and 14, the disciples, they could only count the five loaves and two fishes. But Jesus had eyes to look beyond the five loaves and two fishes at twelve basketful of food that would be taken up after the great multitude was fed. Eyes to look beyond the natural, uh, the limited amount, and see God's great and wonderful supply. I read in Second Kings six seventeen, and Elisha prayed. This young man came and he said, Alas, Father, Elisha, the enemy is everywhere. The Syrians have come and they camped all around us here. And Elisha, having eyes of faith that could see beyond the natural, the human limitations, the armies of men, and Elisha prayed and said, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, 
the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. He did not comprehend this. This is beyond this young man. But because Elisha prayed for him, his eyes opened. And if our eyes could be opened tonight, we would see angels encamped around about us. We'd see the Lord Jesus looking down upon us tonight with great love and great desire to help us and to let us know that he cares. I love that old song, he cares. Jesus always cares. I don't care how bad you are, how good you are, he still cares. He still loves. The Apostle Paul had eyes of faith. When the storm was raging, the sun hadn't shined in 14 days. They had threw everything overboard and feared for their lives. But Paul went down into the ship and prayed. And the Lord spoke to him and told him to fear not. That it would all be well. And he stepped out on the deck. The storm was still raging. The thunder roaring, the lightning flashing, the wind blowing, and the old boat rocking and reeling. He said, sirs, be of good cheer. Not a one of you is going to be lost if you'll stay in the boat. We're all going to make it to shore. Here's a man that could look beyond the storms. I said to someone the other day down at the camp, I said, lady, there'll always be storms in this world. You've got to learn to rest in the storm. Even while the boat's rocking, we've got to learn how to rest while the storm clouds are raging. I said, if you will learn this, you'll get well of your depression. Your fears will vanish when you learn to rest in the storm. Jesus could do that perfectly, couldn't he? Amen. He could rest in the storm because he controlled it all. Jonah, in the belly of the whale, on the bottom of the ocean, still had eyes of faith. He looked up through the darkness. He turned his face toward Jerusalem. And there he believed God. And he came forth because he could look from wherever he was at. Most people would have never looked that I never even prayed. But you know, there's no corner. There's no place that God can't reach you. I don't care where you're at. God can reach you. And I have been praying about this and the Lord has been talking to me about this a whole lot lately. We receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but so often it does not flow in our flesh, only in our spirit and in our soul. It lies dormant in our flesh. If the Holy Spirit could flow through our blood, our bones, our flesh, emanating from the pores of our skin would be the healthiest people in the world because the Holy Spirit said your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Apostle Paul understood this and that's why he said I die daily 
I've got to bring my flesh under subjection to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit can flow through me. He was saying, I want him in my in the marrow of my bones. I want him in my bones. I want him in my liver. I want him in my blood. I want him in my flesh. I want him in my skin. This is the way Jesus lived. He was so full until it emanated through the pores of his skin until his skin shined. And his face looked like the sun. This was the Holy Spirit shining through his flesh. God help us to so live and so walk with him that the Holy Spirit can live in our flesh and control our flesh and then we'll be the healthiest people in the world. He said, oh, you got to get sick to die. Not necessarily. You can grow old and wear out like some people I've known in the past and not have to die with some terrible, horrible disease. Just go on to be with the Lord when it's all said and done. Thomas, when he heard of the death of Lazarus, he said it's over. He's dead. He's buried. It's over. At that time, Thomas did not have eyes of faith, but Jesus did. He looked beyond the grave. He looked at the will of God. He listened to what the Spirit was saying. And he could see Lazarus coming forth from the tomb. And he said, remove the stones. And they removed the stones. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did because Jesus said, I do nothing but what I see the Father do. The Father was doing that ahead of him and showed him ahead of time that he was coming out of that tomb. Eyes of faith that can look into the spirit world and hear what the spirit is saying. I hate to mention this, but I need to. Many years ago, in a vision, the Lord let me see the curtain of time. It was very thin, like tissue paper, but you couldn't see through it. It was stretched across. Angels could walk right through it. The chariots of fire could right, break right into this realm. We're so close to that invisible realm. It's just right here. Just right here. And while I was looking at this curtain, a hand reached and took a hold of it and opened the place in that curtain and said to me, I made you a seer. Look, and you'll see in the spirit world. I have a few times, but not just running there all the time. I know what to do to get there. It takes prayer, it takes walking with God, and moving up to this place to where you can see. I did this during the war that we just had. I had battled and fought and was moved upon so often early in the morning through the day fighting for the Jews in prayer that they would be protected and when I moved into this place and I saw victory and I prayed for Michael and his host to descend and I know many others around the world are prayer warriors for the same thing I'm not taking the credit here just one of the many perhaps that the spirit was moving upon in the world to pray uh, that Iraq would be defeated. And there were. We only had 145 casualties. Nothing like it in history. And many of them was our mistakes. Looking through. I feel the pull again. I don't know when I'll get there. 
I feel the pull again. I had it confirmed by a letter. Your brother Trammell uh, just handed me tonight from another state. A person that's been praying, I didn't know it, intercessor prayer for me. And the Lord had spoke to her about some of the things that I had been praying about and talking about. And I know that that was sent just on time to confirm uh, what I'd been talking about and feeling about. And one day by the help of the Lord, I will look past the curtain of time and pray a prayer of faith about what we see. There's something in that things in that spirit world, you don't know what they are. You say, well, that's strange. Paul said it's unspeakable. You know, if, if you had never in your life seen an elephant and you walked up on one, you wouldn't know what it was. Your brain wouldn't, couldn't tell you what it was because you hadn't been taught. So you wouldn't know what the thing was. You just know it was a thing, a great big old thing, but you wouldn't know what it was. See, we are taught, and we, we take the Bible, and we read, and we learn about spiritual things, and it helps us whenever we do see some things to understand what it is. That's why we need to study, to show ourselves approved. A workman needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. Praise the Lord. Now, we look not at things which are seen. Things that are seen is faith's greatest enemy. We need to look away from things seen tonight and look at things unseen. The stripes that was laid upon his back is unseen. Tonight I can't see Jesus standing here with those terrible scars on his back for your healing. But by faith, you can look. You can see. And you can receive what's pouring out of it. Flowing toward you right now. By his stripes, Peter said, we were healed. It's already done. And the healing virtue is there just flowing out, out, out. And the moment your eyes are opened... And you see it, and you understand it. It begins to come to you. It's just natural for that healing virtue to find a sickness or a disease of some kind. Just moving around over the congregation looking. Where can I find faith? Where can I find faith? And then suddenly... It's there. Praise the Lord. We look not at things which are seen. Some of the things that's happening here tonight, the electricity in this building, is flowing to us from a big plant. You really can't see electricity. You can see it after it's uh, touched something. But it's an invisible power that's flowing through the high lines across the nation lighting up whole cities we know we have practiced we have read so much about Adam since 1945 I remember back when the atom bomb we didn't know anything about it I read of Adam I didn't know anything about it uh, but we had read about them and we read so much about them we listened so much and we can visualize a little atom, and yet they can't be seen with a natural eye. And they can't be felt, and they can't be smelt, they can't be tasted at all. We have got used, we have practiced since 45, you that's that old, of trying to figure it out and look. And we pretty well got it figured out. You see them magnified, magnified, that's an atom. And it's a powerful little thing. And there's something inside of it. You split it and all of this. These things we have eyes to look. But I'm talking to you about the power tonight that made the atom. 
I'm talking to you about the Spirit that came into your heart and life the night you received the Holy Ghost. And you begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave you the utterance. That's the power that I'm talking about. Can you visualize the great sea of God's power that can be touched tonight? Right here, Jesus, the mediator between God and man, releasing it, releasing it to whosoever will. Let him come. Love, you can't see it. You can only see the manifestation of it. Yet it's the most powerful thing in all the universe. Love will finally win over hate. Love will finally stop all wars and bring Jesus to set up his millennium on this earth for a thousand years. Love, love, love. That powerful force that can't be seen yet you have a pretty good picture of it in your mind with eyes of faith even in the natural love love all oh, that it does we've learned a lot about it by watching it in operation when you cannot see it you can hear it as it blows through the trees you can feel it as it blows upon your body but you can't see it you don't know where it came from or whether it goes but you know it's real and sometimes it becomes so powerful until houses are blown away and trees are blown down yet no one has ever seen the wind and yet we know it's real this book talks about the wind this book talks about love this book talks about a faith that could see the invisible things of God. God's promises, the words he said, I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. You can't see the spirit that's in the word, but if you believe it, it becomes a reality when you believe it, because it's spirit. It's not just paper and words, but in that there is spirit. And when you believe, the spirit comes to you. That's the way he has it planned from the foundation of the world. Believe what he said. And the spirit world will open up to you. Ministers, they're God's channel sometimes to uh, release the ministerial gifts. Five, all five of them. The nine spiritual gifts. And with these, we can shake the kingdom of hell. We can set the captives free and heal the sick whenever they come. But these things which are not seen are eternal. This world, as I've already said, is not. The heavens even will pass away. The atoms will pass away and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth but he said my words shall not pass away the words of Satan will pass away forever the words of demons and angels of Satan will pass away forever and be banished into the pit but God's word will live on forever and ever and ever. How can I get this gift? Am I asking? I don't mean you ought to go around peeping into everybody's life, prophesying. You know, after all, you're the one that's got to live and die here in this world. And if anybody needs to be in touch, it should be you. You're the one asking for the blessing. You're the one asking for divine healing. You can't do anything about your brother. Only pray for him. But for your own self, give me eyes to look within. As well as without. Give me ears to hear. What the Spirit is saying about me. You know, 
I have watched a few that they should have been listening what the Spirit was trying to say to them. But they seemed to be deaf when the Lord was trying to talk to them. Oh, let me talk with you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, will you talk to me? Will you let me know what you think about me? I had rather know what you think than anybody else on earth. I'd rather hear you say, I love you, than all the whole wide world put together. Oh, great physician, thou art near. The invisible is being revealed now to the deep inner ears and hearts of people. This was not done in a corner. It was put here for a reason. And for 2,000 years they've tried to get rid of this. But it's still, I suppose, more in circulation than any other book in the whole world because it's his book. And you can't destroy his book. You might destroy one. He would move to have a hundred in his place. You just can't. The great physician now is near. Oh, let me see and hear what you're saying tonight, Lord. As the musicians get ready to play, the great physician now is near. The only healer, the only savior. He promised it to you. Resolve in your heart tonight to bring this flesh on the subjection daily. That the Holy Spirit can flow through that flesh. You know, that's where the diseases are in the flesh. Flow through my flesh, Lord. Flow through my blood. Kill all disease. The Lord said, I am, I kill, and I make alive. He could kill all germs in this place tonight. All cancer cells he alone can kill his word kills amen one angel destroyed 185,000 men in one night oh kill the evil in our flesh Lord help us to bring our flesh under subjection to walk in your love and power Amen.